Welcome, gentlemen. Back from a paternity leave. The Remy and Red show. I can't even remember the last time we had one. I don't, we don't even know how to do this. Some intro music, some technical flaws just to, to start this damn thing. Probably what you would expect. We don't we don't know left from right. Shit, it's like our, our real life NFL teams and our fantasy teams. Complete shit shows across the board. That's what that's basically what you're getting from this show tonight, fellas. Yep, that's the truth. And I couldn't hear the first couple of things you said, so <laughs> Lord above. Oh man. Uh well how you been? You got you got a little facial hair. Uh, grow, growing out the beard a little bit. I can't grow it on my head anymore, so I figure I might as well transfer it to a, the only place, especially before it starts going all gray, which that's that's creeping in as well. I think, you know, forty is finally starting to hit us at last. Oh. We decided to adult a little bit by having kids, getting houses, getting real jobs. So, uh, speaking of paternity leave and. Uh, the reason why we've been gone so long. How's your little one doing? What's the scoop on that? Just fill us in on on what it's like to be a dad. Well, I mean, it's amazing. Obviously, you know, I have this little guy here to watch him change and his eyes open. And now we start to track things. We've gotten a few, like, real smiles, which are cool. Um, I have no idea how y'all did it, man. It is exhausting. <laughs> I mean, we're talking about being, being 40. I'm 41. And... Thank God, like Rachel does, she takes like 90% of like the nighttime shifts during the week, but, um, you know, because I got work on the weekends, but just you're just tired all the time. Um, but other than, you know, other than that, baby's healthy, mom's healthy. So, man, I got I got nothing to complain about. Everything's uh, everything's gravy here. How's, uh, how's Michelle doing? Uh, Michelle's coming along. Baby and her are both really healthy. Healthy. Uh, she's she's about at that point where it's like uh, it's time. Uh, we we have a few more months left to go. We have the the house is being built right now, and so they yep. got yep. they got p- most of it framed at this point. They got the the walls put up, the trusses put up, and so we're just kind of going through that process Good. and uh, looking forward to Christmas break here. Uh, wow. It's been it's been a long couple weeks for for students in the school, but uh, it, everything's good on that end. Uh, it couldn't be further from that in regards to our fantasy teams, Farland. We have uh, officially gone fishing in many of our leagues. Uh, maybe can you just touch base on on how your fantasy season went and uh, good, bad, what happened this year? Yeah, I mean we have great men shit of the week, right? Um, I think it's I think it's very apt to say my fantasy teams have been just shit. It's just been a shit season. And I think like especially in A League and Steve's league, um now Dynasty, I was bad. Made the uh made the playoffs in Empire, made the playoffs in the Megala Bowl, which is just a bunch of strangers, half point PPR. But I just it's just been I don't know, man. There's just we were gonna talk about this as we reflect back, like, all right, Nick, you are gonna be a three win team in A League. Like it's like it's hard not even to luck your way into like if I tried to lose every game, it would still be hard to to lose uh, eleven games. So it's just like it was just a calamity of things. Like last year I won ten games, this year I won three. I have no idea. It's just bad luck around. Uh, so overall, I couldn't string together two right decisions. I couldn't string together two weeks in a row of like two of my guys both playing well. It's like it just was this. I just couldn't hit on anything. So um, kudos to a few of the guys who ran away with it this year. Amazing, but um, that was not my fantasy season. Uh, nor mine. I didn't, I didn't have a lot of fun watching fantasy this year. I, I've not had a lot of fun watching the Raiders this year. I've not had a lot of fun watching the Se- Seahawks have been up and down, but as of late, it's, it's not been very good. And so football this year has not been as enjoyable, especially as it was last year. My, my A league team was, it just, it just didn't happen this year. It, nothing came together. They didn't gel. Uh, like you said, no decisions I made worked. Uh, good players. They just weren't good at the same time. And then, it, you know, 
in your dynasty did did well in South Hill dynasty and, and to some angst uh, for some of the fellows, they did not appreciate my rebuild strategy this year. But in all honesty, it, you when we look at dynasty, which is kind of unique and fun about dynasty is you don't want to be stuck in the middle. When no. you're stuck in the middle, you're, you, no. you can't do anything. You, you can't compete for the championship and you can't get some of those high draft picks that, that you need to kind of change your team around. And so it, it's, it's one of the, it's the first year that I've ever done a true rebuild in, in a dynasty. Uh, and I, hopefully it'll pan out. Hopefully I make some good decisions, but fantasy this year, especially in the a league, uh, had a str- strong division with a, a lot of good teams within that division. And my team was the worst out of all, all four of it. And then, so not a great fantasy season for, for either of the, the two quote unquote experts who do a fantasy yeah. football podcast. Yeah, expert at, yeah. But you don't want to hear something that's funny. So in yeah. South Hill dynasty, I put up 124.36 points today. <laughs> is, it, <laughs> so, is that the most you put up all year? Oh, most I put up all year. And in effect, so definitely the high score of the week. And I'm just looking. It may move me out of that third place overall, which is just, that's just typical. So thing. defeating. <laughs> you know, it's like. Oh, no, Jonas did win. Okay, so Jonas beat you, so thank God I'll stay in that number three spot. But it would be just my luck. Where You want to know what's funny is Jonas wanted to lose to me today, even though I have his pick. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just one of those things. Like, So it's like, what, like, I don't even particularly want to win, but you still put together the team to go out there. And I've got Evan Ingram in because I needed a tight end because my tight end was on a bye. And hurt. So put in Evan Ingram, 33 points, which I know we're going to get to as we transition back to uh, back to A-League. Well, I, it, you know, I don't think we're going to spend a ton of time today talking about uh, the scores. There wasn't a lot of yeah. overall relevance. Are we introducing? Yeah, come here. Hey, Are you coming? just a sec here. Hey, babe. Hey, Honey, come here. Come here. Frenchie on my left. There we go. Hey, the, quick little uh, family break here, guys. We're there going we go. to uh, introduce the newest member of our family here. Yeah. There's a little family. You want to come see Griffin? Yeah, we're recording. You want to oh, come see yeah, Griffin? I just whipping back. He, uh, he just ate. Uh, <laughs> he just had some. Uh, oh, it's just so... had some booby milk, so he's like a little booby drunk. I like how we have a baby and your dog's ass in the shot. I know. <laughs> look, come on. Well, there's your first look at uh, Griffin Anthony Farline. There he is. Hey! He's obviously grumpy that the Seahawks lost. <laughs> what, what color is his hair, Farline? I don't know, man. It's like a... Is there red in it? For sure. Is it like a blondie kind of red? Like... Yeah, it's like a blondy kind of red. So, did, did, what color are his eyes? Bright blue. Bright blue. Oh, Hi. that's so cute. Well, congrats, man. Thank you. All right, dude. Way to make a good cameo, brother. Good job, son. All right. First, first time on uh, the old the old uh, podcast. There, congratulations. Yep. He'll uh, make another appearance. So right. I, I think it's – how about we just touch on who's going to get into the playoffs? That's really what matters here. Maybe we yeah. do a, a final power ranking here at the end of this. But let's let's give uh, some cre- congratulations to uh, the division winners. It looks like it's going to be Cree, even though Jason and Cree both will probably end up with the same record. But due yeah. to uh, Cree's division – record he's going to get in very similar in their points that division was not a very good division uh i'm not sure either of those teams would have competed in in the championship moving on to the next division we have jonas's team and we we had mentioned earlier in the in our in the season here that if his team kind of catches on he's going to be a tough out and i think he is a tough out he's going to uh finish with a pretty high point total his team's going to be tough really buoyed by Jalen Hurts, who's been a 
and and I think we might touch on this here here in a bit. And then the two other teams that are going to get in are Joe's team uh, with a, a ten and three record right now. He he might lose this week, but I think he still will have the number one seed. And then Dennis squeaks in uh, over Spencer, who who is the other person with the chance to get in this week. Yeah, no, I, that's um, not how looking at the teams, you know, day of the draft, looking them up on the board, roster baiting. That's not necessarily how I how I thought it was going to come out. Uh, Nor did but, I. I did like Jonas's team yeah. at the beginning of the year. I thought he had drafted pretty well, but his was the yep. only one that I think that kind of carried uh, that initial uh, reaction over throughout the whole season. Yeah. I just thought he was going to be in trouble with the running back position and, you know, Ramondre Stevenson but, and Joe Mixon played the entire year. Well, I guess Joe mixed up. Did he miss a game? But, but anyway, he, you know, he played pretty well. And then, um, I do, th- I, you know, again, I thought that, um, when I looked at, at, um, Dennis's team love the Lamar Jackson. I thought that was good. Again, I just wasn't, I was not sold on Josh Jacobs. And the reason why Dennis is in the playoffs right now is because of, of Josh Jacobs. And good for him. You know, we yeah. we underestimated Josh Jacobs the entire time. And he he really came back. Um and then you look at you look at um <clears throat> Jonas's team, and I know that we had that big trade, Chubb for Brees Hall. Chubb absolutely helped him. Chubb's been a good Chubb slowed down as of late, but Chubb's been a he's been just exactly what he needed to be just he's just consistent right he's solid but, well when you look at Jonas's team Hertz and Jefferson like, like that's oh, that's why he is that's where, where I'm gonna go there. I yeah. mean he's got a strong he's got a deep team uh that, that scores some points every week but Hertz and Jefferson have been his, his catalyst to to success well, this year well it's not just Hertz and Jefferson I love now in Steve's league I paired Hertz and AJ Brown and I think for the draft capital, you know, Hurts and Devontae Smith is a great pairing. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I. It, it's and a you good know team. who he got back this week, too, who looked really good? J.K. Dobbins. Yeah, oh, yeah, J.K. Looked and, really and, good. and so, and he somehow had 30 points out of Jarek McKinnon, which I didn't watch any of that game, game today, mean. but I, I don't know how how that happened. But uh, Dobbins is going to be a nice little piece to, to plug and play here. Uh, moving forward and then we we, we look at Cree's team really uh, you know he beat me today not a, not a high bar to set but <laughs> I do think that Cree's team is going to go as far as Kyler Murray is going to take him because you have to be able when you're going up because if you you look at it, you're going up against uh, Jake's team or sorry um, uh, Jonas's team hurts right Joey Meatballs, Joe, he's got Burrow. And then once either Kirk Cousins or Lamar Jackson comes back, common thread there, each and every one of them have a top five quarterback at the position. And you don't see somebody making the playoffs that's gone the zero QB strategy um, and is trying to stream their QB every week. That's one of the reasons why, in my opinion, I my team was so bad the entire year I didn't have that QB. And there was a lot of close games. Don't get me wrong. We're talking about games that were just a few points, five to ten points here or there, and Derek Carr puts up nine points. You know what I mean? Well, in, 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 it was something that I really wanted this year. And I was I had the opportunity to take the first quarterback in the draft. I took the wrong one. And that, and that happens. I don't think my strategy was wrong. I think it was vital to get a top quarterback this year. I think that, especially in our league, quarterbacks are worth a little bit more, even though we only start one. We don't have a super flex where, you know, multiple quarterbacks are so valuable. You know, you only start 12. But if you don't have that top five, you better have a great rest of your roster to yeah. overcome overcome those 30, 40, sometimes 50-point games that your opponent's yeah. going to have from that yeah. from that spot. And yeah. I think you you touched on it perfectly. You decided to roll with Derek Carr. That was your zero QB strategy, and it failed mm-hmm. miserably. And you Miser- were unable to to catch up at any point during the season. And there, I don't know if there was really any quarterback that came along during the season, like some other season. Maybe 
maybe Smith from Seattle, but he's he is just kind of gone off the deep end as as of late. But he's been but, more uh, consistent than Carr. You know the one that would have been would have been great is just or is um uh Goff. No, 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 yeah, Goff was good, but the guy from uh, Justin Fields would have been nice to add Fields yeah. midseason, you know, midseason yeah. ad. But you know, again, that, you know, now we're looking back. To start the draft, the strategy I thought um it it just didn't pan out. You know, I mean it just, you know, that and and I tried to load up in those mid value, mid range wide receivers, and the problem was is it just didn't hit on them. You know, yeah. I mean, it's just yeah. like, and so anyway, it was a the, just tough from start to finish. So maybe give us a couple of things that you'll take from this season, from a strategy standpoint, that you're going to reflect upon and go, you know what, I need to do this differently next year in order to have success. Well, you and I talked before we hit record on this, and and um, I just mentioned the QB. I think it's critical to have positional advantages, right? You look at the tight end landscape. I mean, it's just, it's like, it's barren. If you don't have one of those top QBs, it's t- it's not a positional advantage. But the thing that I'm taking from this is that we, you know, we look at that first round and it's always kind of been the sacred cow is that bell cow running back, right? And I agree. Bell, you know, bell cow running backs are still incredibly important. If you were to do a redraft right now, Chris McCaffrey's still going in the top three. Uh, now, uh, Taylor didn't have quite the season, but you, you want one of those bell cows. My thing is, is that wide receiver and the stud wide receivers, that's a positional advantage. I, you know, I look at, again, let's look at teams that are in the playoffs. Uh, Jonas's team. Jefferson. Jefferson, Jefferson right. Um, you go down and you look at uh, Joe's team. Stephon Diggs, he's had a he's had one of the top uh, scoring uh, seasons in the in the league. And you look at he's got he's also he's also got Waddle and Higgins who have been who have been right. really good. It's too bad Higgins. I don't know what happened to Higgins. I don't know a, a, an injury before in warmups or I, I I haven't heard anything crystal clear coming out of that. Or but something. Waddle is Waddle's good. He's fast. Absolutely, he's good. He's Waddle's been great. He touchdowns. And so I, I think you're absolutely right when you talk about how, you know, and I've always been a proponent of running backs are more important than wide receivers. But I think you're just starting to see, even without us having uh, PPR, half point PPR, the, the consistency that you get and the, the lack of injuries that you get from that wide receiver position, it's almost elevated that position above running backs in terms of importance to, to overall success. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. And and I just was going to mention Dennis's team just real quick on that same that same mark. You know, maybe the wide receiver hasn't been, you know, Brandon Ayuk's put up a good season, but he, you know, he doesn't have one of those just maybe we'd start to say, I don't know what, what the equivalent of a bell cow would be, but he's got Mark Andrews, who for large parts of the season had a positional advantage. Now he kind of dropped yeah. off a little bit, but yeah. he won him some games having that pairing with Lamar Jackson. Definitely the beginning, the beginning of the year, that's what set Dennis up for success was having that uh, stack of Lamar and Andrews. And when you that's able to replace one of those top-notch wide receivers when you have uh, Kelsey or Andrews or, you know, probably just those two, to be honest with you. For sure. I mean, you got to think like, again, I'm just looking at my – so my first two picks were – um, Nick Chubb and Alvin Kamara, which Alvin Kamara has been an absolute train wreck, right? But could I mean imagine if that was a Stephon Diggs and, and Devontae Adams, those running backs in those middle rounds who came up came available. I mean, your Josh Jacobs and your even your Ken, Ken Walker, Ken, Ken Walker, yeah. You know, your your I mean, I, there's just a whole ton the of Amy, them there. The the Pierce, the the Pierce, Pierce from the Texans, Pollard, Pollard out, I mean, of, out of Dallas. Yeah, so you're finding that there's some other values there. Um, so my takeaways, as I mentioned, it's just you know that having having those positional advantages is going to be huge. Having a good quarterback is going to be huge, um, and then not being afraid to take one of these absolute just monster wide receivers, the Jeffersons, the Chases, um, Diggs, Ad. I mean, these guys, Cooper Cup. I know he got hurt, but Cooper Cup was off to an incredible start too. Um, it's those type of guys that I think you can build a roster around. 
So what about you? I, for, for me, it, everything that you said, for sure. I, I think I, you know, take the guys that you want. I, I wanted Justin Jefferson. I should have took him over Taylor, even though, you know, everybody had Taylor as their number one overall, but that was not a good team. Matt Ryan was not good. Oh. Uh, so, it, you know, it would have been wise to take Je- just take the guys that you want anywhere in the draft. I, I don't think, I don't believe there's no, anything is reaching anymore. I don't think that, that there's no such thing as that anymore. And so I, I need to hold to that firm, to that principle uh, in every single round. And then, you know, the other thing is how, how important are kickers, defense, and tight ends? If you don't have consistency, at least from those positions, you're going to lose some of those weeks that you need to win to get into the playoffs. Like I, in previous last year, I had two good t- tight ends in uh, D- Dalton Schultz and Knox. And I decided to kind of just wait on it this year. Uh, go with the same guy again. It was a disaster. I could never catch up at that position. Cost me games. Couldn't ever find a defense that was one of the top scoring defenses. Like, I'd be interested to see who these guys have at defense right now. Can you go through and check and see? But I, I, I think kicker defense and tight end, they don't get enough thought and consideration. And it, it takes a ton of luck, I think, too, at those positions to get the top three scores or to get two out of the top uh, three at between those three positions. If you can get two that hit your, it, it helps you so much uh, throughout the, throughout the season. It does. And I, you know, I, I think for me um, now I know kind of, again, we talk about this, the sacred cows, but um, you know, I know Ailey's sacred cow and no rule changes and other stuff, but you know, I would be completely fine with taking away the kicker and adding another positional player. I think it'd be fun. Kickers are so tough. It's like, how do you do your kicker? However, I just did a, I just did a quick look at defenses. You're absolutely right. I remember uh, early in the season, Dennis won a game because the New England defense played really well. Uh, Joe's got Dallas. Dallas has been the number one scoring defense in the entire league. Uh, Jonas has Philadelphia. Philadelphia, great defense. If, that, if you said who are the top three defenses in terms of real life and in fantasy this year, it's probably those three. Yeah, Dallas, certainly Dallas. Philadelphia has been good. They've been turning the ball over. Um, I, I don't know where uh, where New England's at. And then Cree's got the Titans who put up negative points this week. But – you know, I, again, I, I think I hear but, that. But it if you look at his record, he's got a losing record right now. What's that? And so if you look at his record, he's got a losing record right now. And yeah. so you look at the three top teams, yeah. What you know, some of the things that they all have in common, they had really good defenses. Uh, they had pretty good quarterback play for most of the season. And so, yeah. you know, that that position matters quite a bit more than I think we give it give it credit for. But then when you go to take them early in the draft, it usually doesn't pan out. You just kind of got to get lucky or pick a, a defense up early that y- you see has success and, and ride them or ride a couple of different defenses throughout the year. Absolutely. Hey, I just wanted to mention real quick, I know that um, we've skipped over his team since he didn't make the playoffs, but I just want to give a little love to um, Spencey's team. Yeah. I thought that he uh, – <clears throat> I thought he has a good team. He's just – He's going to miss by just a little bit. Um, but at the same time, I mean, you know, Goff, Adams, Allen, Pierce, Eckler, Gasicki. He just played Williams from Detroit today. But then on the bench, he's got Trevor Lawrence, who Trevor Lawrence is playing so much better under Doug Peterson here as of late. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that um, I think Spencer put up. Listen, if Spencer was in in. Uh, the division with uh, Fonzie, myself, Weeds, and uh, Gentry. I mean, he would have ran away with the division. So, yeah. I just want to mention that uh, good team from Spency. Tough luck not making the playoffs this year. Uh, agreed. He was with uh, Keenan Allen for for most of the year. Yeah. And and then, but you look at his team, Gasecki. You look at his defense. He's got Las Vegas. My, he doesn't have those Miami. ancillary yeah. uh, positions to yeah. really help push him to that to that to that next level. True. True. 
Uh, I guess moving forward, we don't want to make this a super, super long episode for you guys, but who do you think is going to win it? And then what's your final kind of power ranking here? Yeah. So I think that, and I've been, been trying to, to, to come up with this. I, I, I do think that Dennis wins this thing. I think it's Dennis versus... I guess it can't be Dennis versus Jake, can it? Because Dennis is going to play Cree. Um, so no, I can Dennis, go is, De- Dennis is going to play Joe. It's going to be one You're right. Four. Dennis plays Joe. Dennis plays so I Joe. Think in the, I think in the finals it's going to be Jonas versus Dennis. I think Dennis wins it. Um <clears throat> Who do you got winning? And then we'll go into power. I got, I got, I got Jonas versus Joe in the final with Jonas okay. winning it. Jonas winning. Okay. Yep. Um, all right. So as far as the power rankings, uh, I, I think at the end of the season, I've got to go with my top three teams being Joe, Jonas, and, and um, Dennis. Those are my top yeah, three. Yeah. No argument there. I think Jonas right now, I think he's at one. I think Joe's at two. I think Dennis is at three. Uh, probably followed by probably Jason's team, then Spencer, then Cree uh, mm-hmm. would probably be the, my next little little uh, go around there. Yeah, I definitely have uh, Spencer at four. I got Pringle at five. And then at uh, six, I've got... I do have uh, weeds at six. Weeds at six. And then just to kind of round it out, I mean, it really doesn't matter which order this kind of goes. It probably uh, Andy and then Pringle. You could flip flop Pringle, Andy, probably Pringle and then Andy. Uh, Then you got, then you got you and Steve Isaac. And then I'm probably bringing up the, bringing up the last spot there this year. Yeah, no, but by far and away, the 12, 11, 10 is, uh, All bad. is myself, it's Ike, it's Steve, and then it's you. Those yeah. bottom four, I mean, you could you could mix and match however you Full want, but point. based purely on record, my team's the worst in uh, the league. But, hey, man, I you know, again, I, I just wanted to end on the note by saying that, um, you know, it's like one of the reasons why we play this thing is because we, we do the draft, we look at the board, and it's like there's no fucking way. <laughs> there's no fucking way Jonas is making in the making the playoffs, right? Um, when I'm done with the draft, like I cannot be more convinced that I'm never going to lose an entire game, in, you know, the whole season, yeah. right? And uh, and anyway, so now it's, now it's the playoffs. And, and again, I mean, more than the money, more than anything, it's uh, being able to stroll in with a little freaking crown on your head at yeah, uh, once a year day next year. So good luck to those four, those four guys. Good, good luck. You know, anyone could win it any year. A couple injuries here and there, uh, a couple balls bounce your your way, and, and you could get a victory when you when you probably didn't think you were going to. But uh, good luck to all the all four members. I think all four have won a title before, and so. <laughs> It's it, we're not going to have a, a, a first time champion this year. So congrats to those of you who, who made the play. Our, our, the way our league is set up, it's really hard. Number one, to even make the playoffs and it's even harder to, to win, win the championship. And yep. so, you know, in, in most leagues and even in 10 team leagues, you have six teams that are making the playoffs. We only have four out of a 12 team league. Yep. And so I, I like that com- uh, competition i like the fact that it's not easy and that anyone can win it any year and so yeah. uh, good luck to those that are still alive and uh the rest of you come join us we're all fishing that's right hey so next year for once a year day i hope one of you fellas hits a, a billion dollar lottery or uh, amc goes to the moon so we can rent out a little beach cabana in cabo and uh and draft from our cabana so Somebody get working on that, please. By by the end of uh, August, beginning of September, old Nikki Farland's gonna need a little vacation. We all, I I think both both of us will. So hey, congratulations on bringing a bit, uh, beautiful baby boy into this world. Um, all right. Uh, it, it, it's got to be a pretty good feeling. I'm looking forward to it myself. I was about to say, not too far away. Yep. All right, boys. Later. Later.